It was again another spectacular pursuit by Garethalax. The weak folks recoiled amid the shining structures. His loathing for the Cyrations was fueled by the creative styles that ornamented their constructions, further emphasizing their species' inadequacy. Today, he and his siblings will show these outcasts the true power and splendor of the Jethraxian Empire. As the plasma coils released their evil force, a flammable plasma ball was hurled at the nearest structure. Garthalax, positioned below, watched with hatred as the tiniest particles left the building in an attempt to avoid the approaching destruction. They will also behold the power. No one will ever evade our greatness, Garthalax reasoned. The irradiated plasma ball detonated when the magnetic field that surrounded it collapsed upon collision. In addition to creating a massive hole in the building, the blast spewed flaming trash in every direction. Carthalax, who relished the notion of their fear at the possibility of certain death, could practically hear the screams. Following a transition, the structure collapsed into itself. Their architecture is truly pitiful. It cannot withstand even a single blast from an auxiliary cannon. The remaining structures were similarly demolished. Garthalax's pride and need for blood grew stronger with each fall. He thought, the hunt will begin soon. The delivery ship was packed with palpable excitement. Each Jethraxian continued in polishing their armor, weaponry, and most importantly, their sense of honor. Today, the commander said, we shall acquire considerable glory for ourselves. We will bring home countless prizes today, by Emperor's decree. By the Emperor's command, shouted the rest of the troop. Garthalax beamed with joy. His first task as a member of the prestigious Emperor's Hand was to serve as an honor guard for his eminence. This was just his second mission. While he was obviously respected, he was eager for the deed that would bring him recognition the retrieval of keepsakes. As the dropship neared deployment height, the commander addressed the furious crew. His armor sparkled as light entered through the opening drop doors. The first and third squads will be responsible for clearing the remains and hunting for survivors to exterminate across Sector Alpha through Charlie. You, the second squad, will be responsible for following the fleeing troops. The second squad reacted with violent bellows and battle yells of joy. Although there was some respect in killing survivors, it was the excitement of the quest that gave them enormous dignity. The commander led the way out of the dropship, exhorting. For the will of the Emperor, the gravity ray slowed their descent to the ground. Following the deployment of all 144 units, the three squads formed a line and marched to their appointed sites. The commander led the second squad into the neighboring woodland where they eluded Garethalax. The task of cleaning the remains went ahead without incident. The debris included no living organisms. Squads might have surmised that this area was a medical facility based on the presence of medical supplies and sick people. Initially disappointed, the companies worried that their adversaries' little strength would result in their total destruction during the bombardment. When the warriors discovered traces heading into the surrounding territories, they were filled with wonder and hunger for blood. A quest was feasible. After speaking with the commander, he granted them permission to pursue the remaining survivors. They marched into the woodland. The forest's canopies were so dense that almost no light entered the plants. They were able to explore the area with considerable ease because to the unit's illumination, but they found no survivors and just more traces. A restless minority of troops broke out from their lines to pursue their prey. The remainder of the battalion began their chase when the squad leaders gave their approval. Garthalax had scarcely traveled more than 200 meters when he got a distress warning over communications. Next, another. The squad commander asked for a report, but received no answer. After a brief break, the squad leader directed the group to reorganize and resume their clearing in the right manner. When the party returned, they learned that three troops had disappeared. None of the others had noticed anything, and a communications check returned no results. The squad leaders instructed the unit to set up camp while they awaited the return of the AWOL soldiers. After establishing their bubble fortress, the unit proceeded to build their camp. 
As the planet's star moved beyond the horizon, sustenance was depleted, and the forest became less illuminated. The next morning, a report from the other squads was released. During a patrol, the third squad lost people, while the second squad noticed movement outside their perimeter. The commander chastised the squad commanders for allowing their ego to overpower their common sense. He seemed outraged. He directed the squad to proceed with extra care in their search. No one knew what the day would bring. Some troops died suddenly when they encountered what looked to be dangerous terrain, while others suffered infections after branches punctured the bottoms of their shoes. Further investigation revealed that these were the results of purposefully placed traps. The rate of advancement through the woodland was slow. The troops' nerves progressively stretched, and they began to feel panic. Even though they took caution, traps continued to capture soldier after soldier. As the trap's potency increased, its applications expanded to include explosive traps and mines. Not only was his team confronted with these plots, but Garethalax also realized that the other squads were in the same situation after hearing a bomb resound in the distance. Suddenly, he saw they were no longer the hunters, but the hunted. As the day came to a conclusion, a wounded soldier shuffled towards his unit. Upon reaching him, the squad leader questioned as to what had happened. The soldier yelled in surprise, It's a monstrous creature. It's unlike anything I've ever witnessed. It happened so fast and discreetly. He followed the leader and withdrew. He looked to be shaking as terror energized every fiber of his existence. The commander was killed by a single massive attack. While the thing slaughtered the rest of the group, I was left for dead. I was the sole individual to have survived. The warrior became motionless and lame after coughing up coagulated blood in big chunks. A definite sense of dread penetrated the group's muted whispers, and fear began to set in. The squad leader, who seemed worried, said, Okay, we have now put up a shelter. As soon as the light returns, we return to the dropship. His acknowledgement of loss was surprising, but well welcomed. A complex was built in the middle of high tensions. Garthalax had never experienced such fear before. They were woken up in the middle of the night by the sound of screaming. The intercoms were filled with terrifying noises of carnage coming from the second squad. When Garthalax shut off his comms, he was chilled by echoes coming from within the trees. Then, immediately, the noise subsided and an awful quiet fell over them. Garthalax was overwhelmed in fear, and he could hear murmurs everywhere. With a controlled dread in his voice, the squad commander ordered the troops to keep silent. They all struggled to sleep as the night passed. Finally, a little bit of light broke through the trees, signaling the return of daylight. As sight improved considerably, the squad leaders informed the group that the third squad had been slaughtered by mysterious sapient aliens, according to sources. As a result, they retreated. The team, which had once been formidable, had become a terrifying force. Despite being massacred here, the Emperor's hand had never failed throughout the Empire's history. Additional obstructions impeded the withdrawal, causing chaos inside the squad's already weak attitude. The men left in disgrace as the retreat turned into a disorder. One hurriedly approached the forest's perimeter. Garethalax then spotted it. A person chased the soldiers in horror. It attacked and jumped with unimaginable intensity, slaughtering soldier after soldier with utter wrath. Garthalax could see light passing through the woods. He had almost returned. The dropship's armament was capable of eliminating the approaching threat. Even as he reached the forest's edge, he peered in the weak dusk light for the delivery ship. His main concern was that not only was the spacecraft gone, but there was also no one else present. He turned to face the trees when he noticed it. Immediately in front of him was the monster. Boo! Garthalax slumped onto his back and attempted to flee the beast by crawling at high speed. It pushed its long black hair back behind it. A scar stretched along the left eye and across its face. With two little masses that drew Garthalax's attention, its body was remarkably slim. Despite his reptile heritage, he was conversant with mammalian civilizations. 
His pupils' eyes enlarged with amazement when they saw she was a woman. He yelled, abhorring her. He wondered, how could a woman endanger him? Who did she believe she was? As her frown deepened, he remembered his concern. In the end, she was held liable for the entire tragedy. Why? She asked. Why would you storm a hospital crowded with the sick and elderly? Your leaders were inspired by what malignant spirit to assault the defenseless. He said, a vermin is a vermin, sick or not. He misinterpreted her twisted look for disgust as she shouted, Vermin? 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 Those who died worked as both medical professionals and nurses, assistants and carers, individuals who are determined to put an end to distress. Despite your hatred and violence, you have the guts to call them vermin. Here, you're the vermin. Fortunately, I am familiar with the exterminator, because one genuinely terrible person was left alive. I will carry out my duties right now, she added, looking back at the dropped craft returning to the war cruiser. She produced a detonator and focused her attention to the delivery ship. I programmed the autopilot to return and charged the core to its final capacity. The spacecraft should be destroyed by a chain reaction set off by the detonation. I ask for your attendance while I utterly destroy your vermin haven. His expression was that of incredulity. He watched this, deity of wrath with ominous confidence, and heard every word. He said, Who know what are you? In quick succession, she proclaimed, I am vengeance, as she detonated the device. A light emitted from the vessel, followed by a massive tremor that ripped the cruiser apart, causing it to disintegrate in a blazing fire. My name is Wrath. I myself am human.